Hey, hey, what's going on, my friend? How are you doing? Hope you're doing good today. David Lamero here. How would you like to find out the third uh, of the four main marketing mistakes that I see people making that you might be making too and don't even know it? Uh, well, today we're going to be covering number three, uh, continuing on with our four part series. Uh, so just a quick recap on what we've already touched on. Number one, uh, we talked about people, not enough people talk about the benefits of their products whenever they talk about just the product themselves. Okay. Uh, number two, people, too many people I see often condense the steps in the relationship building process. And that's a mistake. And I've, I've actually learned that it's better to, to, to go slower, to develop a relationship, to, uh, what we call generate the lead, connect with the lead, and then determine the need, right? That is actually a, a little bit slower, but you're going through the proper steps in order to see if, uh, that person even needs help from you. What's going on, Benjamin? Oh, good to see you on here, man. Yeah, you're finally catching it live. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, glad to see you on here, buddy. If you're watching this by live, uh, drop a live in the comments. And if you're watching this by replay, I love you too. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, so here today, we're going to be talking about number three in our four-part series. Uh, and if you haven't caught the first two parts, then go back on my Facebook Um or if you're watching this on YouTube or on my blog, then just be sure and watch the other video somewhere else on this page. Um, so you got that. So today, number three is too many people, and this goes for inside network marketing. This goes for even outside network marketing. This goes for the trainers of the network marketing industry. Uh, this also goes to um, people that are wealth coaches or entrepreneurial coaches. There are too many people out there that are, are making it sound too easy, right? This is a mistake, okay? Because uh, people have go into business or into um, entrepreneurialism with false expectations. And so what ends up happening is you have people that end up dropping out of the space, okay? Dropping out of, and they give up on their dreams, they give up on their goals, their hopes, they give up on their why, on their vision, on impacting people, on changing the world. They give up on those things because they thought it was going to be easier. They thought it was going to happen sooner, right? Uh, and they, they just didn't get the results that they wanted in, in the first two weeks, the first month, the first 30 days, the first two months, the first six months, whenever in fact, business in general takes a long time. Here's a funny fact about, um, gosh, Ray Hickton mentioned this. I think it was a Domino's pizza in their franchise, um, like bill of, of lading or bill of ledger or whatever it is. Um, their, their papers on starting up the franchise, they actually say in there more things on the opposite spectrum. Like it's more likely that you're not going to succeed. It's going to take you 10 years to recover your money. <laughs> How would you like that? How would you like a business opportunity? If I gave you a business opportunity and told you that you could have residual income and a, and a leveraged source of income. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And that's actually cheap for business franchises. Um, a quarter of a million is more like it. And by the way, you're only going to break even after 10 years, right? So just sign here. No big deal. Let's get you started. <laughs> How would you like that? You're going to be in the hole for 10 years. Okay. At least they set the right expectations. Okay. So what I have learned you guys is that because I have actually looked for a lot of ways to, to shorten the time curve. Okay. And I'll just give you a quick insight that I, that I've learned. There's no shortcuts in business, but there are ways for you to condense the time frames, okay? And how you do that is you find somebody that has what you want and you do what they've done, okay? Simply put, right? Now, there are a lot of people out there that are selling courses, making it sound too easy, and we call that the shiny object. So don't fall prey to the shiny object syndrome like I have, where how can I do this more effectively? How can I get around actually talking to people? How can I get around normal business practices. Okay. <laughs> it sounds sexy. It sounds appealing uh, and very tempting because we want things that are easy, right? Whenever in fact, the best things in life come to you after much difficulty. Am I right? Would you agree with me on that? That's completely true. And I've found that a lot of people get wiped out in any business venture. Okay. And especially 
I mean, even even outside of business, in in uh, in in working out, most people give up on their consistent daily habits because it gets too tough, right? But I found that the world doesn't respond to uh, to flash activities, okay? They don't respect um, the marketplace, relationships, your health, your body, the universe. None of it responds well to flash in the pan, high burst of activity, you know, for a day or two, and then it goes. Because hem- have you ever gone to the gym and it's been a while and you just you decided to kill it, right? But you ended up killing it and you killed your body. <laughs> That's definitely happened to me. It's not a good idea. Well, what I did today was I went to the gym and it's been about a month or so and I didn't kill it. I, I, I worked out, got a good workout in, but it's more important the second time I go to the gym and the third time and the fourth time. So the marketplace responds better to consistency than it does just flash in the pan activity. So with business in mind, with your health in mind, with a skill, a particular skill, any skill in mind, it takes about two years for you to really get good at anything. All right, I found this to be true in martial arts. I found this to be true in in mus- uh, the music world. I also play electric guitar. I've been playing it since I was fifteen, so that's fifteen years now. Um, I've, I've found it to be true in business, in in speaking, in learning, in coaching, in uh, in any kind of you know just regular sport, regular activity. It takes about two years for you to really get a good handle on it. Now, here's what's funny. You could be doing something for two years and simply because you've put in what I call the mat time, because that's a that's a martial arts term. If you're in jiu-jitsu or if you're in judo, then you know what I'm talking about. You've spent time on the mat. You've put your head on the mat. You've been you know moving around on the mat. You've spent time on the mat getting that experience. You've learned what works. You've learned what doesn't work. And here's what's funny about what works and what doesn't work, especially whenever you first get started in anything. The first year of you getting started in anything is just survival, okay? The goal of the white belt is just survival. <laughs> uh, it took me about a year, you guys, to go from uh, white belt in jiu-jitsu to blue belt, right? And that's that might be a fast time frame. I don't know, but I, I, I actually got my blue belt in jiu-jitsu. I, I was a black belt in taekwondo as well. I got that in about two and a half years, and... Um, and then I went on to jujitsu. I got my blue belt in jujitsu after about a year. And I did that for about two years consecutively and then on and off for another couple of years. And then I jumped into judo. And what I realized was because I had spent the mat time in the other martial arts that I learned judo faster. Okay. So simply because I had experience meant that I picked up on the other, uh, the other area or category or business venture, if you will, I picked up on that faster. But if I hadn't have been a white belt in the industry, if you will, uh, for some amount of time, it would have taken me just as long if I had started as a white belt at judo. Okay. So translate that over to business. Okay. Give yourself some time, give yourself some, some leeway. All right. Now you've got to do the things that people have done before you, right? And give yourself some time. Now, here's the secret. Every week, if you have done something towards uh, towards building your goals, building your dreams, okay? First off, a, a low production week is better than a no production week, okay? So if you're super busy and if you're, excuse me, if you're working on a side project, but you're super busy with a full-time job, if you do even a little bit towards your business venture, congratulations, congratulate yourself every week. Here's the secret. Do something physical to celebrate your, your activity, your progress, your, you're doing something to improve your situation. Isn't that better than doing nothing, right? What's the alternative? If you don't do anything, then you're not going to get anywhere and your situation's never going to improve. So for things to change, you have to change like Jim Rohn always says, and don't, Go into something uh, with the with the mindset that it's going to be easy because it's not. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get bruised. And here's why: only the top five to two percent of of any business, of any um, you know, the gym life of anybody that goes to work out. Why only the top five to two percent of people in society reach the pinnacle level? Okay, it's not because it's it's um, you know tough. 
uh, sorry, it's, it's not because they have the right genes. It's not because it's a pyramid scheme. It's not because, um, you know, they, they had a better life set up or better situation. It's because of consistency. It's because they had better, uh, bigger goals. It's because they were more so self-disciplined to continue on a consistent basis. So here's a great way to think about it. Much more, I would rather you, instead of going into it with, let's give this a try for the first month or the first six months or even the first year, don't go into it with that mindset. Instead, think, what are the daily habits, the daily success habits that I can do that will make success inevitable, right? A lot of people get into business or they get into a a network marketing company or they join my team and sometimes just simply because they they started a new thing they get overwhelmed they're excited about it and then they get overwhelmed and some people drop out simply because they're a little overwhelmed and and that's you know that's kind of life that's that's a lot of people but if you go into it with what are the daily success habits that i can do to make success inevitable. If you plan your day around those activities, and then if you wanna overthink later, that's fine. You can overthink things later, but after you've done your daily activities that make success inevitable, okay? So figure out what those daily success activities are and do those things first, right? I did a video on um, seven ways to help uh, yourself stop procrastinating, and I believe that that was one of those. Uh, Go to davidjlambro.com. Uh, to check out some of my blogs. Uh, one of them was on that and another one was on um, something from Brian Tracy on how to help you uh, maximize your time. And I believe it was on that blog. So you can go to my blog, check out more if you want. If you don't, no big deal at all to me. I hope that this video helped you. If you're watching this and you got some value from this, please feel free to share it with anybody else that you want to grow with. If you know of anybody that uh, has the wrong expectations, or if you th- if you know of anybody that that went into something and they thought it was going to be easier than what it is, uh, then feel free to tag them in this video or share it with them, and let's go impact the world together. So uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and uh, and I, I, w- I would love to conversate with you. I read all of the comments. I love you guys. Thank you for watching, and uh, I appreciate you. So I will catch you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.